Hello and welcome to this week's Lab at Home vlog. This is the final vlog in our Lab at Home series. So I just wanted to recap what I've shown you in the previous vlogs and share with you a few things that I've learned from doing molecular biology at home. So I started off the first vlog by showing you my Lab at Home setup on my kitchen table with occasional guest appearances from my cat Smithy. In subsequent vlogs, I extracted DNA from a range of sample types, including mushrooms in my fridge and collected from my neighbour's garden, uh, plant leaves picked from my garden and house plants, my own hair and spit, and from feathers sent to us by collaborators and plucked from taxidermied parrot wings that I bought off eBay. So I used my own DNA to try out a few of the experiments that are available in our B101 learning kit. Um, firstly, I tested whether I had a taste receptor that allows me to taste bitterness in foods such as raw broccoli and Brussels sprouts. And then I tested whether I had the athlete gene. Spoiler alert, no I don't, sadly. <laughs> at this point, I handed over my lab at home setup to my husband for him to extract his own DNA and see if he had the athlete gene. So my husband did that and tested his DNA and found that he is indeed genetically more athletic than I am. <laughs> But having never even held a pipette before, and I really threw him in at the deep end and didn't let him do any practice before, and then I filmed him the whole way through as he did it for the vlog, uh, I was very impressed that he managed to do that without any molecular biology knowledge at all and to get a result. I then extracted DNA from um, pigeon and parrot feathers that were sent to us from our collaborators and was able to find out the gender of the birds that those feathers were plucked from, which is really important for breeders and conservationists working on monomorphic birds. And then I also extracted DNA for our barcoding workflows, and I was really impressed how well those DNA barcodes amplified and how accurate the sequences were when I sent them off to the sequencing facility for Sanger sequencing. That was probably my favourite workflow to test because it really shows you the complexity of DNA analysis and how it can play such an important role in scientific discoveries and enhancing our scientific knowledge. So I have a few tips that I want to pass on to you from my time of doing molecular biology from home. Uh, the first is to do with keeping your workplace sterile. I showed you this, I believe, in one of the previous vlogs, which is this distill surface disinfectant. And I really recommend investing in a bottle of this. Be careful when handling this concentrate because it is a skin irritant. So please wear your gloves when you're using that. And uh, invest in a spray bottle, potentially, so that when you dilute the concentrate into water, it's just easier to apply. And I always just spritz my work surface down and wipe it before I start an experiment, just to keep everything clean and to prevent contamination between the different experiments. Uh, if you, like me, have a pet and um, who's prone to curiosity, and you might be leaving your uh, workplace and lab stuff set up overnight between experiments. It might be worth just putting a plastic sheet like I do or tablecloth over everything overnight so that um, cat or dog hairs or, or anything like that uh, don't settle on your workplace. Just uh, another key to keeping everything sterile. And especially if you're extracting DNA from, I don't know, some sort of mammal uh, for your experiment, you don't want to be accidentally extracting DNA from your pet instead. Secondly, um, and sort of following on from that, is uh, protect the work surface that you're going to be working on. So mine is my kitchen table. That's a varnished wood surface. And I don't think spraying it with distill would probably be so good for the varnish or the wood. 
uh, hence why another reason why I actually covered mine with sticky back plastic before I started work so I can wipe down the plastic with not worrying about the surface underneath it. Um, another thing is that if you're using a scalpel to cut up your sample, uh, please don't scratch your work surface. Maybe invest in a cutting mat and put that down uh, before you get the scalpel out. And even a, a cutting mat could work with the sterility as well, uh, because you can then spray and clean that down at the end of your experiment uh, rather than directly onto the work surface. Another tip I would make is be a good housemate and just give them the heads up. That you're going to be doing some science somewhere in your house and just let them know that at some point there may be some samples and reagents in your freezer or defrosting in the fridge. Um, as long as you have the lid sealed on everything and store it in the correct conditions, everything is safe to be stored around food and drink. So don't let them worry that you're going to contaminate your uh, fridge or freezer spaces with uh, anything nasty. So if you're just doing a few experiments, um, using an empty plastic bottle for example, to dilute your TBE buffer into, or for microwaving your agarose gel, is absolutely fine. As long as it's microwavable, um, it's completely fine to use. However, if you're going to become a long-term uh, user of the Bento Lab and reagents like I've been, I really would recommend investing in some glassware you can find them on eBay or Amazon um, or a lot of places online. For storing TBE, the diluted TBE, because uh, you'll be buying the 10x concentrate from uh, the Bento Lab store and then you want to dilute it to 0.5x for the majority of our protocols. I'd really recommend getting one of these glass uh, labware bottles and making your TBE up into that. And for pouring agarose gels, um, I would also invest in a 250ml glass beaker. So wearing gloves, this might just be a carryover from my days in a research lab, but I tend to always wear gloves when I'm doing experiments. The Bento Lab reagents have been designed to be as safe as possible for your use at home. However, there are some that are still skin irritants. Uh, so I've already mentioned that the concentrated distill can be an irritant. Um, also the concentrated TBE buffer and also the alkaline buffer in the hotshot DNA extraction kit are just some examples of chemicals that you really wouldn't want to get on your skin and leave there without washing off. So the benefit of wearing your gloves is that if you do think you've got a little bit of uh, the liquid that you're working with on the glove or even a bit of the sample uh, or DNA um, you can just dispose of that glove and put a new one on and that has a twofold effect it prevents you from accidentally touching your face or putting your finger in your eye and introducing that chemical into them uh, into your eye which is, is never recommended um, but it also prevents contamination between your samples in your experiment this might seem like overkill to you, but keep lab work separate from um, food and drink. In a research lab, you're never allowed to eat or drink in the lab. And you might say, oh, but you know, it's fine because I'm working from home. Um, and especially for me, I've got my whole lab set up in the kitchen. However, I would not recommend it because accidents do happen. Uh, so, for example, sometimes when I have microwaved the gel and taken it out of our microwave, I just leave it on the kitchen work surface behind me, uh, which is granite and nice and cold. So it helps that gel to cool down that little bit faster. And what I was saying about protecting workspaces, um, it, I wouldn't put it straight onto the wood just in case I burnt a hole into my kitchen table. So I put it in the work surface. However, just once I put it down next to a glass of water and then when I went to take a sip of the water, 
I accidentally picked up the beaker of Agro's gel instead. Thankfully, um, between picking it up and raising it to my lips, I realised, hang on, my glass of water shouldn't be so hot, and realised what I'd done. But it does happen, and it's just best to keep your lab work separate from everything else, um, just to avoid uh, silly mistakes like that. And then the final uh, tip I would say, uh, about tips actually, so these pipette tips are surprisingly sharp at the end and I have found uh, many times in the past that if you empty them straight into a bin bag they will rip through the side when you're taking the uh, bin bag out of your dustbin which is very annoying and uh, very awkward. So I do recommend uh, having a thick plastic resealable Ziploc bag, something like that, that you can just dispose of your tips in. Um, empty yogurt pots also work just as well. And then when you've filled that bag or yogurt pot, you can just seal the bag or put the lid on and dispose of it into your bin that way. Just a few thoughts then before I sign off. When I was preparing for this video blog, I rewatched the first vlog that I recorded for the Lab at Home series quite a few months ago now. And at the end of that first vlog, I said that the aim of this series was to give you an idea of what you can do with your own home lab setup, as well as to give you a sort of behind the scenes, um, a day in the life of a molecular biologist feel. So I really hope that I've achieved that with these vlogs. Um, I hope that you found them interesting and you have a better idea now how to follow some of the protocols if you were to have your own bento lab and reagent and consumables set up at home. It has been a really interesting learning curve for me as well because uh, I've never filmed myself doing lab work before and it certainly adds another element. And uh, normally when you make mistakes uh, in research lab, you don't tell anyone about them. You uh, learn from your mistakes, but you sort of brush them under the carpet. Whereas uh, in filming these vlogs, I've sort of laid it all bare for you and shown you what hasn't worked as well as what has worked. And uh, I hope that you found those troubleshooting video blogs as interesting as the protocol ones which have worked first time. The final aim of this series was to inspire you that it really is possible to do DNA analysis from home. And I hope that by watching this series, you think now that you do want to give it a go and that it really is possible. So as a, I draw to a close now, um, we'd really like to hear back from you, which of the vlogs you've most enjoyed and if there's any content you would like to see in future vlogs. Um, follow us on Twitter at The Bento Lab or subscribe to our YouTube channel and you'll be able to see things as they pop up. Now all that remains to be said is thank you very much for watching and we hope you've enjoyed this Lab at Home series.